And we ask that you have your way. Have your way, God, in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm excited again this morning for the Lord to ask me to stand here and be the worship leader. Anytime God asks you to do something, you should be excited. No matter how small or how large you think it is. But everything we do for God is a big thing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm grateful this morning. And I'm glad that he found me worthy. Okay, we're going to have a selection by the choir. Then following that, we're going to have scripture by Deacon Dwight Fryer. And prayer by Deacon Gary Wilson in that order. Amen. Amen. I'm delivered. 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 I'
live it. I'm to 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 live it. Well, the Lord done delivered me. Whoa, why should I be bound? You know that the Lord done delivered me. Whoa, why should I be bound? Well, the Lord done delivered me. Whoa, why should I be bound? Well, why should I be bound? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did the Lord deliver you? He delivered me. And guess what? He ain't done. He's not done. The sacred place up here. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've been asked to read. And I actually have a couple of uh, scriptures, so if you could bear with me. The first scripture will be from Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Since this month has been about family, and I thought this scripture and the next would be appropriate. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. And it reads, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. Amen. And then we'll read from Acts 16, 31. I'll give you a moment. Acts 16 and 31. Acts 16 and 31. And it reads, So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Acts 16 and 31. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearer and mostly the doer of his word. Amen. Amen. I heard a man say that Satan wins a lot of battles but he can't win the war so God we come one more time praising your name for who you are God for how you brought us out today that you didn't have to be God we were able to come into your house God to Bless your holy name, God. We can't forget how you've blessed us, God. Over and over and over and over and over, God. So many times you have blessed us that we can't even count them, God, how you have been so good to us, God. So, God, we come leaning, independent, trusting, and believing only in you, God. Because without you, God, there is no tomorrow. Without you, God, there's no today. God, without you, God, there's nothing. So, God, we come with praise on our lips, God, and on our hearts, God, asking you to go with us today, God. We're not concerned about the numbers today, God, for we are concerned about saving souls, God. And our job is to come and get, get in, in power to be able to go and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus, God. So we stand this morning, God, as your children on the ready to run to tell somebody how good you have been, God. God, we ask for a special blessing for the word bearer, God. Give her all that she needs, God, as she goes forward today. God, that 
she doesn't worry about the numbers, God, but she worries about the word that you have put into her bosom, God, and allow her to express it the way that you would have her express it, God. Thank God we just want to have church today, God. We want to have church like we never had it before, God. Just bless this little small congregation that we're here today, God. Thank God we ask you to remember our pastor and our first lady. God, remember them wherever they might be, God. Give him the power that he needs to do what he's doing, God. Go with us all, God, through this day, God. Arouse the spirits of the ones that are here. God. That we don't be just setting, God, but we are giving you praise. We're giving you honor. We're giving you glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. the things that God has done. Oh my God, I can go all the way back to my childhood. And if I was able, I would do a Reverend Ayers, run up that aisle and come back down. God's been just that good. And he started off with delivering us, y'all. <laughs> he delivered us. I don't know about you, God that delivered me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, gentlemen, for that song to remind us that we are not the same. Yeah. God has changed us and delivered us and set us free. Hallelujah. I want to thank uh, Deacon Fryer for those two soul-staring scriptures that remind us of just who we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to act. Deacon Wilson, I thank you for the prayer of faith. Appreciate it. We got, we got a couple small announcements here this morning. And the first one is we have friends and family day coming up. 
on September the 11th, and they would like for every family to dress in one color. If your family is wearing black, then everybody in your family, your household, wear black. If your family is wearing orange, then everybody in your household will wear orange. Amen. Amen. And the next announcement is that we're getting the choir back together. Now, I was going to join you guys, but a couple people told me to just stay right where you are. Oh, come on, come on. It says, stay right where you are. <laughs> we're getting the mass choir back together, and that's a blessed thing. Praise the Lord. When we get on one accord, mm, sing the songs of Zion, the Holy Spirit shows up and shows out. But we have to be on one accord. One accord, all looking to the hills from which cometh our help. Hallelujah. Not to the left, nor to the right, but straight up. Thank you, God. So so if you got some pipes on you and you can sing some songs, or if you're on any of our choirs, you're part of the mass choir, and they would love for you to, um, they're going to give the rehearsal time, but we're going to go to mass choir first. Um, return audition. Rendition. What is the word? Um, when the people get ready to sing, Bishop. The rendition. rendition. <laughs> Return rendition, September the 15th. Amen. And look at all these songbirds out here. I see a whole church full of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, I want to remind you that we won't have Bible study this Sunday. Nor Sunday, not Sunday. Bible study this Wednesday. Sunday school resumes the first Sunday in September. And then we have our birthdays list here. Everybody, if you have your list, I want you guys to join me in wishing Deaconess Thomasina Fryer a happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, my sister. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's always special when the birthday person is right here in the house. So we, we are so grateful to have her here and working so hard on the behalf of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. And then we also want um, to have everybody to sow a seed. You know, God is, we talk about God is good and yeah. God does this. He blesses us to have exceedingly abundantly more than we can think or act. I can, I was talking to Reverend Ella on the way in, and I was remembering the time where I, I, I barely had a bank account, and it barely had any money in it. <laughs> but God has turned that thing around. Yes, look for it. That I have what four bank accounts, Come on here. and he put some money in all of them, Won't he do it? and I dare not hold back on God. He only asked for ten percent of yeah. what he gives me. If he yeah. gives me a dollar, I'm gonna give him ten cents. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we have to do. And I, I use that illustration because sometimes people think they don't have that much, mm -hmm. but whatever you have. Give God his first. Amen. And I'm telling you, he worked miracles with what's left over. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness of what God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will turn your life upside down if you just be obedient to his word. And the word of God says, you give me 10%. 
and he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings you don't have room to receive. So if you're going to sow your seed on Giblify, take out your phone, hit that little app button, give you 10%. If you're going to bring it to the church, trustees are here to receive your funds. You can mail it to the church, or you can do it on Cash App. And I believe my sister, who works very hard every Sunday, the birthday girl, is screaming this information across the bottom of the screen. So however you want to give, get that in your hand, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, because we know that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Lord, we thank you that we have jobs, that we have Social Security, that we have retirement. Whatever the avenue that you have provided for us to give, Lord, we're here right now to give you your just. And we're giving it cheerfully, God, because your word tells us to. So, Lord, every person who have it to give, bless them, Lord. Increase their territory of finances, God, in the name of Jesus. And those who have it not to give, Lord, bless them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Mm, and let them know that it came from you, God, not from anything that they're doing, from your grace, from your mercy. So, God, we just thank you. And we give to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God is good, y'all. I'm telling you, if, if I had enough time, and that's not the right thing I'm supposed to be doing, and I start talking about all the stuff God has done for me, service would be over, and we'd be starting again next Sunday. Hallelujah. God is good. Now, this preacher this morning will introduce herself when she stands up and bring the word. And the, the best part about this whole thing is she's nervous, y'all. <laughs> and, and, and when you're nervous, God can use you more than he can if you, you're not nervous. So we're going to come up out of our tent door and listen to the woman of God as she brings the word. We're going to have a selection from the male choir, of course. And then we're going to hit the next voice you will hear will be the woman of God. Minister Zena Pressy saying what thus says the Lord. Amen. And I thank you for allowing me to be your worship leader this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, just before we start, uh, we were celebrating birthdays and when we have one that's kind of special to us, because anytime we call on her, she's always ready to go and do whatever we need to do, and then get us back in shape whenever. Just, she's just a good girl for the church. So we wouldn't want to not be able to recognize, we call her Muff. <laughs> she had a birthday a couple weeks ago, and she, she's special to us. We wanted her to know that just that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh-huh. We've been talking about how good God has been all morning. So it, it just seems appropriate. We might as well just sing about it too, you know. <laughs> Lord, you know you've been so good. Lord, you know you've been so good. Help me out. Say, Lord. Lord, I know you've been so good. Oh, yeah. Come on, say. Lord, I know you've been so good. You've been right there. For me. All night long. Yeah. Lord, I know you've been so good. All right. 
right, we get wound up. Let's do it again, Sam. Lord, you know you've been so good. Mm-hmm. Hey, Lord, you know you've been so good. You watched over me all night long. Lord, you know you've been so good. Jesus, I've been wrong in my life. And sometimes I've even seen Should have been dead Sleeping in my grave But Lord, you, you saw it again Should have been dead I said, sleeping in my grave But you spoke one word And made death behave You've been good You've been, been good. good You've been good You've been good Hey, hey, Lord, you know Lord, you know you made my life. Hey, Lord, you know you saved my life. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. Lord, you know you saved my life. I said, Jesus, you've been my mother, and Lord, you've been my Father too. Out of all the troubles and trials I've had in my life, without you, Lord, I don't know what I would do. That's why I got my hand in the winding chain, waiting for God, and every day I'm going to call him. Jesus' name, you've been good. You've been good. You've been good. You've been good. Oh, Lord, you know you've been so good. Sing it, hey. Lord, you know you've been so good. Come on, fellas, hey. Lord, you know you've been so good. You watched over. Over me. All night long. All night long. Lord, you know. Lord, you know you've been so good. You saved my life, Lord. You know you've been my life. Oh yeah, Lord. You know you saved my life. Said I should have been dead. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. Lord, you know you saved my life. Hey, one more time. Lord, you know you've been so good. Lord, you know you've been so good. You watched over me all night long. Lord, you know you've been so good. Hey, 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 hey. yeah. Have he been good to you? Did he watch over you all night long? Wake you up this morning, Lord. You know you've been so good. Started you on your way. Watched over me all night, all night long. Lord, you know. Lord, you know you've been so good. Hallelujah. Lord, you know you've been so good. Come on, fellas. Lord, you know you've been so good. Yeah. You watched over me all night long. Lord, you know you've been so good. Hey, 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 hey. You've been good. Hey. Hallelujah. Real good. Hallelujah. 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 That's all I know is hallelujah. Hallelujah, just because he's been so good to me. Hallelujah. I'm excited about today, yesterday, and the days to come. Hallelujah. Ha, come on and give God some praise. See, the words of Kirk Franklin said, if you ever question about heaven, 
that what silence sounds like? Just let it fill the room. Open up your mouth. If you want to know what heaven sounds like, open up your mouth and declare his glory. Open up your mouth and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's disrupt the atmosphere. Disrupt the atmosphere with your praise. Come on, we can't pity pack him. We got to give him glory. Hallelujah. Praise God because he is the only living God. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it one more again. If you ever question what heaven sounds like, just let it fill the room. We act, we act like God didn't do nothing for us. Just the fact that he woke me up this morning. Just the fact that he started me on my way. Just the fact that I'm in my right mind. I got a portion of my health. My kids are still living. My husband is healed, delivered, and saved. My family! Come on! I can't make you break them. I only know what he's done for me. He healed. He sealed me. He delivered me. He saved me. He set me free. And the Bible says, who is free is free indeed. Ah, Jesus. Mama, mama, mama. We have to put a praise on that one. Ah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the name that's above all other names. Some call him Yahashua Hamashiach. Oh, God, thank you. Giving honor to my bishop, Dr. Vincent Oliver, in his absence. Oh! Bishop, for entrusting me to preach from this sacred desk. And my mentor, First Lady Oliver, woo! <laughs> Giving honor to my husband, Deacon Jeff Pressy of 35 years. Look at God. <laughs> Won't he do it, Bishop? <laughs> the lo thank you for loving me and, and, and keeping me and taking care of me. I call him my black coffee, no sugar, no cream. <laughs> My chocolate thunder. <laughs> to the New Calvary Baptist Facebook family, God bless you for tuning in. Don't move because I will not be before you long. So don't get a bathroom break. Don't do none of that stuff. Just stay still. And this is a very special day. My mother is here. My 81-year-old mother. Still striving, still standing, hallelujah. So there's four generations that's going to be in her, including her four generations. Isn't that awesome? What a blessing, hallelujah. Now we started this month with our theme on family. And each one of the, each one of the preachers brought it to a level of higher and higher. Our bishop kicked it off with let's stay together. The minister, corner gay minister, celebrating our family. And then Reverend DuPont came along and ministered, it's time to fight for family. And in order to fight, to, to stay together, celebrate, and fight for family, we have to stay in a posture of prayer. I don't have three points. <laughs> All I need is some praise God hallelujahs. All I need is some amens, some good God right now, and I promise you I won't be before you long. The Lord led me to the topic of the power of a praying family. And my scripture is 1 Thessalonians 5.17. 
pray without ceasing. Ah, oh, Jesus. We know the famous quotes, a, a family that prays together. Together we stand and divided we fall. Uh-huh, we, we know all that, but we got to stick with the word. The word says pray without ceasing, right? So because family is God's ordinance, God's way, God's plan, it is the Lord's doing it, and it is marvelous in his sight. I'm truly, truly blessed to have one of the best family in the world. My family, my in-laws, and the best church family in the world. And I don't take it lightly. And when it comes to family, we must come lock and loaded with prayer. In season and out of season. So, Mom, remember the topic of the power of the praying family, right? Mm -hmm. So you will be moving to Delaware in Jesus' name. That's all I got to say. The power of the praying family. You moving to Delaware, uh huh? How many have that grandmother who just prayed like they were just singing? <laughs> the grand, my grandmother would pray. Yeah, I'm from New York, but I went down South Deacon a lot. And my grandmother would pray. We would be in the field or we would be chucking corn and peas and hanging out clothes. And my grandmother would just start a tune. And she would, you would think she's singing, but she's saying, oh, Lord. Yeah. God, I thank you for my family. And I'm like... Okay, Grandma. Mm -hmm. And she would just break out and pray and just start praying for her kids, praying for her grandchildren and when they're doing different things. And she would just pray. We would sit on the porch, and she would just thank God for many things. I watched her wake up praying. I watched her through the day praying. I watched her go to bed praying for her family. I, I watched this. So only one can imagine later on down the years, those prayers saved our life. It saved our life. It saved our life. I'm just trying to set the order of a praying family, what a praying family looks like. And a couple of years, a couple of years ago, we had a sick cousin who was sick. My, family, my aunt's called. We got on a prayer line, and we praying for our family. So I thought I was doing something. They said, Benzina, can you pray? Sure. I'm praying that my aunt cut me off. Jesus. And she went in and prayed, and she sealed it and said, if thy will, be, if thy will heal him, if not, make it well with our soul. That's the power of a praying family. Then the Pressy family, we, we pray every, we used to have a prayer line and we used to talk and pray about concerns and different things and text prayers. And the younger ones were always in the text with F-O-E, family over everything, or O-T-F, only the family. So we do some things and, and, and we, we pray together because this power when the family comes together and start praying. Prayer develops our relationship with each, with each other and God. It demonstrates our trust and dependence upon him. And if we want to resemble him and emulate Jesus, we must always have a posture of prayer. So let me just say this. The family members that stays on, on a wall, please do not be upset when the only time you get a call or a text asking for prayer. <laughs> That's the power of a prayer family. We must remain diligent and keep praying. Why? Because we are the connection to keep the family going. There's a portion in one of the hymns that says, what a privilege to carry everything. Not some things, not a little bit of things, but everything to God in prayer. Prayer is simply communing and connecting with the Father to seek guidance. Aligning his will for our lives, it sets, a, it sets generational blessings. When we open our mouth, it sets generational blessings. It helps discern and accept God's will. Hallelujah. Jesus. Prayer is not bargaining with God. I found myself bargaining with God when it came to my son. Okay, God, I, um, he, he blessed me. I said, okay, God, I got it now. And then when I don't have it, then I said, okay, God, he's yours. You gave him to me. This is your child. And then I took him back, and I started playing tag team with God until one day I had to give it up. 
because they didn't belong to me. He belonged to the Lord. So Jeff and I, we had to step back and give them to the Lord. And when we did that, my son fell in love with Jesus like never before because I took my hands off it and God allowed God to be God over his life. And he came now, he come teaching me, Mom, did you know this? Did you know that? So we have to always stay diligent in our prayer. Yeah. Prayer is not making demands on God. God, if you bless me, I hear this all the time. God, if you bless me, I will forever give you glory. If you bless me, I open my mouth. We don't make demands on God. Prayer is not a way to control the Lord. A way to show up one spiritual before others. This is what prayer does, though. Prayer empowers us. Prayer brings God down to us. Prayer will keep us in this life. Prayer will show us the lily in the valley. Mm. Now, that's that good God right now moment. The lily in the valley. Prayer will stop a storm. Prayer allows us to reach up to the power and tap in. Prayer equips us for the battle. Prayer enlightens us. The word power is simply the Lord presenting overwhelming wonders that equals results. And as we see, every powerful moment is the results of prayer. Deke, I'm going to say it one more again, okay? I'm going to say it one more again. Presenting overwhelming wonders that equals results. Now, that's a good God moment. Hallelujah. The power of a praying family brings results. So in order for results to happen, we must first pray God's will and plan for our life. We got to pray his will, Bishop. We can't just say, well, I need this. We have to know God's will and his purpose for our life. In order to pray God's will, we must have a relationship with him. So our prayer requests will line up with his will. Prayer is like a fresh pot of coffee. We know coffee drinkers love coffee. And it jump starts our day. It gives you a blessed assurance. It gives you the peace that passes all understanding. It refreshes. It revives. It restores. It re prepares. It places us at the feet of Jesus. When our mouth is to his ear. When we open up our mouth, he inclined to hear what we have to say. And Hebrews 11, 6, the B clause says, he is, I'm talking about Jesus, that my daddy, he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Come on, family. When a family prays, it brings calmness to a chaotic situation. It brings order when things are out of order. It brings peace when things seem upside down. It brings heaven down to earth. Hallelujah. Have you ever been around that family member, saved or unsaved, let's be real, maybe not your family, but you know somebody. <laughs> but a praying family will bring calmness. Why? Because before the gathering starts and while the gathering is going, the family is praying. Because you already know things is going to go crazy, right? So you already praying. You walking into the family. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this gathering. I thank you that you're going to set order. I thank you that you're going to move mountains. I thank you, Jesus. Prayer has been set in order when two or three, this is the word, this is not Zena, two or three are gathered in his name, and there he is in the midst. When all else fails, prayer is essential. Yeah. Mask or essential, right? We have essential workers. Yeah. Prayer is essential and necessary because it is our power. Presenting overwhelming. Come on, that equals results. Come on, prayer, prayer has power to it. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The enemy can't do anything with prayers that never cease. <laughs> can you imagine you stop your prayer and things when I stop when I start praying for my son and things start happening I pray every day my grandson stays with I'm praying I'm on listen I hit the floor play, praying for my grandson he in the basement I'm like praying touching and agreeing it, prayer changes some things in people's lives it do something just imagine something that never stops Ever, when a family prays, not one, not two, but multiple people touching and agreeing, 
Do you know how much power that is? And Pastor Bishop Oliver words, it's do the most power. Yes. <laughs> Prayer puts the enemy on the run, family. It dismantles his grip on our life. It dismantles yes. the grip that he has on our family. Yes. Hallelujah. The enemy can't do nothing with a praying family. Oh, Jesus. Why? Because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. It was Moses who prayed for his sister Miriam, who became a prophet of the Lord, but yet the same breath she complained about Moses. You know, we do that in families, right? We talk about our family members. We come against them. But guess what, Moses? And then the Lord cursed her with leprosy. And guess what Moses did? opened his mouth and said, Lord, heal my sister. And he heard her, him, and he healed him. That's what we do. When people in our family seem like they're coming against us and they're doing things, we open our mouth and we say, Lord, they know not what they do. Jesus. Oh, God, they know not what they're doing. We just open our mouth and we pray for them anyway. That's when you have the heart of God. That's when you are a true prayer warrior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Victory always precedes prayer. Because a praying family knows their power and authority. Paul and Silas knew that prayer was the kickoff to their victory. Hallelujah. Now, I'm getting ready to close up, Bishop. You ready? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> a praying family kept God, keep God first and seek his face. A praying family starts worship, not worship. I'm going to say that deep one more again. That just blessed my spam. That just blessed my sha na 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 It hit that. Uh-huh. A praying family starts worship, not worship. A praying family know God's plan and his voice. A pray I'm talking about a praying family. A praying family is steadfast and unmovable. A praying family carries the weak without murmuring. A praying family talk and breathe the word of the Lord. A praying family spend time with God. Your prayer should never cease. Pray without ceasing, family. Hallelujah. A prayer, praying family lay aside every weight that easily besets them. A praying family forgive so they can live. A praying family love the Lord God with all their heart, mind, and soul. A praying family pull people up and not down. A praying family rebuke in love. A praying family emulates and resembles Jesus. A praying family demands and commands the atmosphere. You demand and you command the atmosphere. You don't let nothing get in your way. You don't see nothing but Jesus. Why? Because you look like Jesus. You emulate Jesus. You walk Jesus. You talk Jesus. You act like Jesus. You see Jesus. So all you do is come, when you walk in the room, you command the room. Nothing can, you, the enemy can't do nothing when you command the room, when you walk in there with your power, when you don't cease your prayer. Hallelujah. A praying family creates an atmosphere that God can dwell in. He said, a praying family sets order. Hallelujah. Prayer reconciles. Now that we, now, now I know what my family stand in need. You know, I know what my family stand in need for. Do you know what your family stand in need for? I dare you to stand on your feet and open up your mouth and start praying for your family. Brick and strongholds, open up your mouth. Pray those strongholds are broken right now in Jesus' name. Pray and heal and take place when we open up our mouth. Bring the hall. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praying every diagnosis is under the blood of Jesus. Every diagnosis is under the blood. Praying for battles in our mind that we are free in Jesus' name. Praying gun violence will cease in Jesus' name. Praying that we take back everything that the enemy took for us and give him back everything he gave us in Jesus' name. We pray for life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and start praying for your family. Pray that they will be delivered, healed, and set free. Hallelujah. 
Pray that they yield unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Pray that order will take place in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The prayer of a, a praying family never cease their prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Now today would be in vain if we didn't offer Christ. And it's simple. It's nothing hard. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to roll on the floor, roll around the church. You don't have to do none of that. Just know that life is short, is too short, and hell is too hot. Plain and simple. You will, if, plain and simple, would you like to spend eternal life flesh burning, screamers, screaming in pain and, and torture, or in paradise with your maker Jesus at his feet? And the only thing you hear is worship and praise. On this day, you choose. And just know before you can effectively say no to Satan, you have to say yes to Jesus. Y-E-S, yielding everything submissively. So you must admit, you must believe and confess. Romans, um, Romans chapter 10, 9 says that if thou confess, open up your mouth. With your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, if that's you in the congregation, just lift your hand. A deacon, a, a, a deaconess or a deacon or a minister will come talk to you because we want everybody to be saved. We want everybody to, be, to go to heaven, to be at the feet of Jesus. And the word also declares, whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. Now that's some good news. Now that's that good God right now. Holla. enough just to say yes and if you have backslid and, and you left him I promise you Jesus is right where you left him with open arms ready to receive us that's how much he love us hallelujah Jesus so if you are saved just lift your hand if you say because I'm looking because you're not saved I'm coming to you so please lift your hands if you are saved, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Won't he do it? Won't God do it? So remember, fam, you got to pray so you can stay together with your family. If you're the one that's on the wall, stay on the wall for your family. I promise it won't be, a, if the results will be a blessed thing. Hallelujah. Ready for the benediction. Thank you, Jesus. Now unto him. Now this is the best part. One of the good parts of about the benediction is praying a blessing as we leave this place. So I praise God that I, that I am the vessel that he's using before I open my mouth and speak this benediction in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep you me from falling and to present you and I faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen amen, amen. hallelujah